Welcome to Midlife Matters, where we celebrate women's wisdom and wit. I'm Georgianne Lucier, your host, and I'm delighted to introduce Liz White, who is a fifth generation publisher and executive with the Record Journal, and that serves 265,000 households in Connecticut. So welcome, Liz. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. Very interested in sharing all the information behind the scenes yeah. about your work. Mm -hmm. And you grew up in the news industry, and you have strategic and operational responsibilities. Mm -hmm. So let's hear about um, the number of publications that you have that people might sure. not be aware of. We call ourselves our uh, Record Journal Media Group, or mm -hmm. RJ Media Group. And we have the Record Journal, which is a daily newspaper that covers Mayor and Wallingford, Southington, and Cheshire. And then we have eight weekly newspapers. Mm -hmm. So with that combination, we're covering 100% um, of the households in nine towns, on a daily or weekly basis, depending on the products. Okay. And then we have two websites and a digital agency as well. Mm -hmm. so I started going to newspaper conferences when I was a teenager okay. with my dad. There's a special group called the um, Inland Family Newspaper Owners Conference. Okay. So that sounds like very specific, mm -hmm. and it is, but there's people from all across the country who are family newspaper owners who get together. And I started going to that when I was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And all of us truly care about the industry truly care about our communities and mm -hmm. we really want to stay family owners yes. and continue to provide local trusted local journalism to mm -hmm. our communities. So we're really passionate, we're excited, and we work together even though we are located all across the country in different states. How have the women in your own life influenced you and helped pave the way for your generation? The, the woman who has the biggest influence in my life has always been my mom. Mm -hmm. And even though she's not in, in the family business, she hasn't worked in the family business, she, in a family newspaper, it's always part of the conversation, mm -hmm. no matter where you are. We're at the dinner table, we're on vacation. What she has always done is support us, um, be part of listening to what's going on with the business, mm -hmm and um, helping us with what we should do next. Inside the business, my grandmother was a, the third generation, and she was the editor alongside my grandfather, who was the publisher, and they worked together side by side for 50 years. Mm -hmm. Now, if you think back to what when that time frame was, that it wasn't as common for females to have that um, type of leadership role, mm -hmm. um, and she she just, you know, was a natural. <laughs> One of the Record Journal's strategic pillars mm -hmm. is a philanthropic funding model. So tell us about the Latino Community Reporting Lab. The Latino Community Reporting Lab is supported through philanthropic funding and sponsorships in combination. We launched a year ago this coming Monday. So we're okay. coming up on, on the lab's one year, uh, one year uh, anniversary. But leading up to that, we did a five-month listening tour. Mm -hmm. And the community told us what what they wanted. That's how we developed the mission, which is to amplify the voices of our local Latino communities. Okay. So the listening tour was 82 individual listening wow. conversations, four focus groups, and 51 survey responses, and we had all kinds of wonderful people in our community giving us feedback. Since then, we've been able to hire a bilingual editor and two bilingual uh, full-time reporters. What are some goals that you have for continued uh, professional development, you know, on your own part. Well, first of all, those awards, some of those are personal, but some of those are company awards. Mm -hmm. And honestly, any of them are something that I would attribute to having a lot of great people working yeah. around me, right. with me. Do you find there's women like yourself that have children? Because I know you of have course. a beautiful family. Yeah. So that's yes. a set of complexities. And there's times in your life where you have to take a step back and Focus more on your family, yeah. and you then you come back and you focus more on work. You know, you, you adjust as you go. Zigging and zagging. Yeah. So what advice would you give your 25-year-olds? Giving it your best versus giving it your all. Okay. And I was giving it my all, and I couldn't, I couldn't, it, it was up. too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I think you can stop, and instead of giving it your best, which means like, you All can in. pause yeah. and you can mm -hmm. and you can give yourself a break and then it, you're going to be better when you do come back to it because you've you've recharged right Wonderful. so i think that means something different at every stage of your life mm -hmm. so, right Midlife Matters, where we celebrate women's wisdom and wit. I'm George Amosu, your host, and I'm delighted to introduce today's guest, Gwen Samuel. Gwen is the president and founder of Connecticut 
parents union and she is a taxpayer advocate and much much more we're all in for a treat welcome Gwen thank you so much for having me I work with the black and Puerto Rican caucus and other lawmakers and we introduced a parent empowerment law and the attacks on parents was so rude it didn't matter what color you are mm -hmm. parents weren't capable of, of, of you know of being engaged in their children life making decisions or, you know regarding education and I'm like, uh, excuse me, Mr. Government, last time I checked the birth certificate, your name wasn't on there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you, parents need to be a part, an active part of their children's education because it's their children. And so I introduced the law, and the attacks were so brutal that I said I just never wanted to see that again. So I worked with parents, and we formed the Connecticut Parents Union in 2011, mm -hmm. January 14th. And the bottom line is to protect the educational rights of children. And that's how many people know me, as mm -hmm. that fierce advocate for children. And because it's not a soundbite that children are our future. Like, they really are. Mm -hmm. And if you don't invest in them now, you're going to have two choices. They're either going to be taxpayers or they're going to be tax burdens, mm -hmm. meaning our prison systems, our temporary system, you know, our welfare systems, right, the systems that the government kind of has to take care of you until you hopefully take care of yourself. And I'm saying no. Give children the tools so that they can live self-governing lives. And so that's why we formed the Connecticut Parents Union to ensure that every child, regardless of skin color, zip code, school model, has access to what they um, need to be productive, self-governing. Speaking of politics, you're also a taxpayer advocate. Yes, I'm a big time because, I don't know, Connecticut's a beautiful state, beautiful people. But we need to do better at being fiscally responsible. People are doing the best they can with their limited resources. We've had so many small businesses permanently closed down. The private sector was shut down during this pandemic. And so now people are trying to find their bearings. People have lost their homes. People are being displaced. And so that means when the money, when, when, you're, when the, our government, when our elected officials have our tax dollars, then they need to do be fiscally responsible and ensure that there's a return on that tax investment. And that's the challenge with our state. The checks and balances are very limited. Transparency is a bad word. And I'm like, well, it can be tran you can be non-transparent with your money. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the taxpayer's money, we want to know how you're spending it. I'm excited to be working with three amazing women now because now I work with them. Um, I'm a fund manager as well now. I'm not just the founder of the mm -hmm. Connecticut Parents Union. I formed with three amazing women something called Restore, Build, Grow mm -hmm. Opportunity Zones. Because I learned there was a law in 2017 that private investors can invest in many of these distressed areas. Mm -hmm. I say that to say, as I segue what I would tell myself, just be curious to know, to, to, to ask more questions. But you're like, we're young. I don't need to know. Tomorrow's... But tomorrow is not promised. Mm -hmm. One thing I've learned with loss is tomorrow is not promised. So just just spark curiosity in our children, you know, and, and, and encourage them to want to know. You know, it, it's, it's tough out there. The peer pressures are very real. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm a part of this, this new group, this Opportunity Zone Fund, to see how can I work with private investors to invest in these distressed communities. To, to expand workforce development opportunities, help lift all boats mm -hmm. during this pandemic. And, and that's what I would tell the younger self. Work with our young people. And to the older generation, share some of that wisdom, right? Let our young people know the liberties that they actually have. Because if you don't help our young people learn how to respect it and learn from it and nurture it, you may subconsciously want to destroy it. And so I'm all about in, empowering people to tap into their own liberation efforts. Mm -hmm. I hear people say, I'm going to the black community or the brown, I'm going to build this. No, engage the community mm -hmm. in that process because people want to be a part of their liberation efforts. People prefer to work than want the handout, contrary. Mm -hmm. Because I always tell people, the one who feeds you will control you. Mm -hmm. But we, it's easier to get a potato chip in an urban community than a potato. Thank you very much, Gwen. Those are just wonderful, wonderful experiences that you've shared and 
your perspective and i thank you so much for being a guest on midlife matters and thank you so much i just had a birthday so i'm yeah, definitely in absolutely. midlife <laughs> and please tune in to hear other fascinating women and future segments of i'm george ann lucer your host and i'm delighted to introduce today's guest galena latham a wallingford resident who grew up in ukraine and is helping to send much needed supplies in the midst of that terrible war welcome galena it's an honor to be here. Wonderful. You recently wrote an article for Wallingford Magazine, described how you've channeled what I would call your anguish into action. So there was one wonderful neighbor that you had that really helped get things moving in a big way. And this effort became known as the Triangle of Hope, largely Wallingford, but some Meriden involvement as well. So please share how these events unfolded. Uh, of course, the war in Ukraine did not just start in February. It has been ongoing since 2014. Mm -hmm. But on February 24th, Russia launched the full-scale invasion into Ukraine. The hot spots shifted from just the east of the country mm -hmm. to pretty much all over. Uh, so it, it was a huge escalation. And of course, just like everybody else, I was absolutely glued to the news. Mm -hmm. And that was all I could do. After a while, it, it, you know, of course, it takes a toll on you emotionally and physically. Mm -hmm. So I just, you know, I see that this cannot continue. Uh, I need to channel this pain, this frustration into something mm -hmm. so I um, it was trying to see how I can go about this and I uh, talked to a few people and then I thought oh how about I talk to Roz she lives just a house over on my street and I know that she is so active in this town and she most definitely reserve, deserves all of the recognition for this art effort because when I came to talk to her she listened she was very empathetic and she suggested um, a few people that I could talk to, and that's how this whole thing started. I got a large donation of humanitarian supplies from the Hungarian house, mm -hmm. and that immediately went to, I think that shipment may have gone through the Ukrainian national home. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit after that, <clears throat> Roz Gallagher put me in touch with Steve Knight mm -hmm. and with Ed Zavaski. They are, uh, you know, of course, Polish National Alliance and Wallingford Rotary Club. Mm -hmm. And then the Meriden Rotary Club got involved also. So these three organizations, the Rotary Clubs of Wallingford, Meriden, and the Polish National Alliance, mm -hmm. they created what they called Triangle of Hope for Ukraine. There's also that Wadsworth Foundation, right? The local... Yes, so as with any fundraising effort, mm -hmm. the big part is raising money, and another huge factor is just raising awareness. Right. So at the Polish uh, National Alliance event, mm -hmm. there was a person who is connected to the, to the Wadsworth Foundation, mm -hmm. and she mentioned Maidan United to the foundation, and then the foundation got in touch with Maidan United directly, and they talked, and as a result of that, they donated money to purchase two more ambulances. I'm sure those are still running and saving people's lives on a daily basis. Wonderfully generous people. Mm -hmm. Again, a few weeks after, uh, I just sent out a list. It was a combination of things that were needed, you know, that Maidan, uh, Maidan United put out, and there were some things in other community organizations mm -hmm. were doing, uh, for example, the Ukrainian National Home. Mm -hmm. So I just made an Amazon list and listed my address and just told people that if you feel just as powerless as I am and you would like to do something, mm -hmm. here's what you can do. And I got so many packages, I had to move furniture out mm -hmm. of my sitting room to accommodate all those boxes. And my son was very much involved. He was in charge of like opening packages, stacking all that. So mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was good for him to, to be a part of that effort. But um, we sent that list to 3M. And my husband also sent it to Community Health Network of Connecticut, a mm -hmm. place where he works. And those people joined, so we just had, you know, several SUVs leave our house with everything that people sent to us. And we just, you know, it's, you, you feel so powerless, but mm -hmm. then you feel this flood of support from those around you, and that definitely lifts you up. Wonderful. So you've compared in your article um, 
the Ukrainian war to American experiences, say, with 9-11, certainly World War II, the atrocities, the Holocaust, et cetera, and wars in between. And it seemed like your message is that people need to not look away. So how would you say people can help not look away? Uh, yes, that's the topic that I can talk about for a very long time mm -hmm. because I, you know, daily I read news and they're just harrowing. Mm -hmm. The What people go through, this is 21st century Europe. This mm -hmm. is what is going on in the European capital is just unbelievable. My message to people is just to remember that this is going on. I know news can be depressing. And I think our reaction is, oh, I don't want to get depressed. I want to shut this off. Mm -hmm. And I'm not advocating that, you know, do what I did early on where right. you just lose sleep and you just can't stop, mm -hmm. you can't function, basically. That's not at all what I'm advocating. I'm just advocating for staying informed.